That's right. Well, good morning, church. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. I pray everyone had a very Merry Christmas. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to a happy new year as well. Won't you stand to your feet? This morning uh, is a special service. Uh, what we're doing is having a family service. That means that we're keeping all the children in the service this morning. With the exception of the nursery, we do have the nursery opened up. We have people vacationing um, the holiday season. We do have some that are quarantined just for, for precautions. We do have some that are sick. So we just felt it best. We'd just have a service with everyone in. And depending on how the kids do is depending on how long I'll preach. Amen. And so let's open up with a word of prayer and uh, just invite his spirit, the Holy Spirit into this place. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we're able to come in and, and, and meet together in fellowship. Lord, we thank you for uh, uh, the opportunity to worship you and to, to understand and read and, and hear your word, Lord God, come forth. And so, Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to come in and, and just have your way in this place. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me my hand clap of praise. Well, good morning, church. How are everybody doing this morning? Come on, let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, you know what we sing.
Savior. My Savior lives. 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 Sing it again. serve a living God. Amen. Alive and has given us opportunity to connect with him in such a powerful way. Our creator God that loves us so much, Jesus, uh, uh, took everything upon that cross, not that one, but on, upon the cross for you and I, that we may have a relationship once again with our creator God through Jesus Christ. I tell you, thank God. Amen. The other I, at least I understand that the other religions, you know, they are, uh, those that they talk about, they're all dead. We, we're the one that has the living Savior, amen, and his name is Jesus, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sure. We want to thank you all once again for being here. As I said, this is a family service. We're going to have all the kids in. We do have a nursery available if you'd like to use that. Uh, we do have the nursery attendance, but the Sunday school classes, the kids are going to stay in here. For family service like I said some are on vacation some are still in the holiday season some are being quarantined precautionary reasons some are sick so we're just going to keep everyone in I'd like for the ushers to come at this time we are going to receive the tithes and offerings of the house and uh, just in, then enter into a time of worship and so father God we once again come to you in Jesus name we thank you Lord for the opportunity Lord to come together Lord God, and to give unto you. Lord Jesus, we read in Acts uh, where uh, uh, it's recorded that you said it is better to give than to receive. And so, Lord, we come, Lord, uh, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God, we know that you love a cheerful giver. We come with the tithe and offerings, placing this in your house, Lord God. Give us wisdom and direction, Lord God, uh, for the funds that are here to do the things to build your kingdom. We're sure to give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on and give to the Lord this morning.
Aren't you glad he lives this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're just going to enter into a time of worship this morning. Just want to invite you in to just have that communion with the Father this morning. Make it personal. Hallelujah. He's so worthy of our praise and our worship. Thank you, Jesus.
the melody that you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone cause I'm no longer a slave to fear child of God, cause I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. chosen me love has called my name cause I've been born again into my family your blood flows through my veins cause I'm no
So the Lord would want us to know today, just to remember that you are, you are praying and worshiping from a place of victory, that God is our victory, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or worldly, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, and the main weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's done it, and He wants you to pick up the sword. And he wants you to command the enemy of sickness off of your family. You will have the power and authority because of the blood of Jesus to command whatever the will of God is into your family. So you, it is up to you as the believer to take that authority and use it against the enemy for the victory in your home. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled because God, Jesus, has overcome the world. So remember that and pray with power. First John 5 says, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have the petitions that we desire of him to confirm that word. Time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. I hear the spirit say, It's time. Hallelujah. It's time for the day. It's time for the great light to shine. I hear the Spirit say, it's time. time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old winds to change. I hear the Spirit say it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for
says lift up your heads O your gates and be lifted up you everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O you gates lift up you everlasting doors the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory that's jesus christ amen <laughs> hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity once again to worship you corporately, to sing your praises, and to find ourselves, Lord God, just connecting with you in this way. Lord, we thank you for those that are here. We thank you for those that are watching on live stream. We invite them in. Lord, we pray for all of those that are being affected, Lord, in, in, in this season, uh, uh, whether it be sickness of COVID or, or other sicknesses. 
Lord, we just send forth your word to heal each and every one, Lord God. We thank you for the power that's in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Thank you all once again for being here this morning. We are having uh, this morning our uh, uh, family service. We we're keeping all the children in uh, this morning. We do have a nursery that is open, uh, and attendants are back there if you'd like, if you need that, but you're welcome to keep the children in as well. We have those that are out on vacation, holidays, uh, some that are quarantining, you know, just to be in, you know, precaution, and those that are sick, so uh, we just continue to lift them up. What we're going to do this week, uh, um, uh, this coming up Wednesday, uh, Bible study, we will not have Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to give it the full week, just like we did last this past week, and uh, we'll see some folks just healed up and ready to come back to church next Sunday. Amen. So those that are watching live stream and those that are here this morning, just make note we're not having Bible study um, uh, this Wednesday night. And uh, this Thursday is actually uh, my anniversary. Marlene and I have been married for 38 years. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Going strong. Amen. Happy anniversary. And uh, uh, so anyway, we did get married on New Year's Eve. Imagine that. Amen. We thought that was going to be a, a great thing. And while, when our children were small, we could never find a babysitter to go out. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but now we're all good. Uh, half my kids are on vacation. Uh, we got some that are heading to Disney World right now as we speak. They may be watching, and we send our love and prayers to them. Uh, that's Brittany and Dustin, their children, and, and Katie, uh, my youngest one, went with them. I've got Brooke and Adam uh, and uh, their family, the Compos, in from uh, Colorado. They're with us this morning, but they're heading out to the beach tomorrow. And uh, so Marlene and I, we're just going to be at home, at home, me and her and uh, Rebecca, a couple of our sons if they show up around the house, amen. But anyway, thank you all for coming. Uh, those that are your first time here, thank you all for coming and being a part of of, uh, of what God's doing. I pray that you, uh, you feel the presence of God. I pray that you feel welcome. And I pray as the service goes on for all of us, including me, uh, that we are challenged you know, uh, in the things of God, we're convicted to do the things that God wants us to do. And so uh, this morning's message, as Marley and I were thinking about today's message being a, uh, the church family as a whole is meeting together, we got the little ones in here. Uh, it'll be an abbreviated message uh, uh, for you. I'll just kind of keep an eye on the see how the kids are doing. If they get too rambunctious, uh, me and Dustin, we have a saying, we're just going to land a plane, okay? And we'll just uh, say amen, and, and that'll be it. But uh, this morning, I, I want to talk to you. You know, we're ending the year 2020, and we're approaching fast the year 2021. And, uh, and uh, I'm excited about what God has done this past year. I was talking to Chase Gauthier before service. A couple of us were out in the front, and uh, we were talking about, you know, the things that have gone on this year. And um, many, many people have looked at the year 2020 in such a way, and maybe rightfully so. so I've heard this, you know, they have a new curse word in the dictionary, and it's called 2020. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot that's been affected. There really has been uh, uh, physically, emotionally, financially, and, yes, some spiritually. Uh, but we were talking about how we've just been blessed uh, you know, Chase has talked about his job and, you know, how God has provided and, and continued throughout this entire year. And I think about our church family and, you know, those that have been affected by, you know, uh, the COVID virus. Uh, in the beginning, we had a few, but no major cases. Uh, we've had some uh, recently. Uh, probably the, the worst case I can think of, and, and, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I know Ms. Vera Henry uh, was in ICU uh, uh, some time back uh, with it. But you know what? She is clear. She's good. She's at home recuperating, doing well, and uh, just taking precautions. But she is good to go. 
Uh, so we've had some many challenges, you know. Uh, we've uh, uh, had that, but I tell you, we've been blessed as a church. We've been blessed as a family. I just look back and see, and I see the, the faces here. And how many of y'all can say you've been blessed in the year 2020? I tell you, uh, I, I think about the scripture when God's people were in uh, Egyptian bondage. And, uh, and God said, okay, it's time for them to get out of this bondage. And he sends Moses to give the message uh, to let his people go to Pharaoh. And, of course, we know the plagues came. Uh, God's people were living in Gosham, and, you know, nothing happened to them. They were secured. Amen? Even though uh, just right across the, the next neighborhood, there was a whole lot of mess going on. Uh, and, and I know we've been affected, you know, uh, as, as believers in some ways. But uh, I thank God for uh, his blessings upon us this past year. Amen? And, you know, we kicked off our building program actually years ago. We uh, launched it back in June of 2019, and we, taught, we, we used uh, uh, the slogan, Faith for the Future. Y'all remember that? And we had the tent outside, and, and you know, I'd preach messages about, you know, David, uh, a man after God's own heart. He, he wrote many of the psalms that we read here and. And David, uh, uh, a man that uh, was, uh, was, was pursuing God, um, a man that God used in many ways, a man of war. And uh, later on in his life, he desired to build God a, a tabernacle. And that was his heart's desire. You've heard me preach that message. And, uh, and God spoke to him and said, no, you're not the one that's going to build it. You've been a man of war. You've been a man of blood. But your son will build the temple, the tabernacle. And at that point, David could have got sideways with God. David, you know, he wasn't a perfect guy. We know that. He could have really got an attitude with God because it was something that he wanted to do for God. And now God is telling him, David, the king, you're not going to do it, but your son, once he becomes king, he's going to build it for me. Well, you know how that, that rolls as far as in a, in a monarchy you know, uh, you can't have two kings at one time, so David would have to have died in order for Solomon to step in his place and build the tabernacle. So what God's saying is, in the natural, David, you're not going to see it. Your son's going to build it. And David could have got sideways with God, but he didn't. Matter of fact, it says in Chronicles, he gave more than anyone. He just dumped in his riches to build something in the natural that he would never see. Now, in the spirit, he did. And I know in heaven he had seen it, but, uh, but in the natural he would not. Why do I bring that up? This is one of my messages about faith for the future. What I've seen in our church here, uh, and I've had those precious men and women that are, that are seasoned in the Lord, that are mature, that are at the young age of 80 and getting close to 90 years old, you know, said, Brother Jimmy, I just, I, I just you know, I'm pouring into it. I want to see this. And, and you know, uh, what some of them have been privileged to see it. Uh, I know Miss Daisy Dake uh, went on to be with the Lord before this building was built, and uh, but she's seeing it right now, amen, and she was one that just gave and gave, and so uh, um, we think about faith for the future, I, I think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, in their story, God had promised them a land, right, and an inheritance, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't necessarily see the full inheritance of it, but their children and their children's children did. I want to encourage you, you know, our, our, our launch of Faith for the Future is just that because we're sowing in. My little grandson, Owen, was one-year-old yesterday, got his first haircut, and, man, he's just full of life, and uh, we're, we're, we're sowing into his future, amen, not only him but all your children. We're blessed to have a young church. We're blessed to have a middle-aged church. We're blessed to have the seasoned uh, a saints with seniority, I think, is has uh, been coined the phrase. We have a we have an awesome church. We've been in, investing in faith for the future, and and I think about Jesus. I think about his walk on earth, and he chose twelve and the twelve to follow him, disciples, and we know eleven did so, and uh, he used eleven uh, that now has turned into billions and billions of Christians. Come on, Jesus, the church, amen? You know, he didn't start out with this huge campaign. He started out with them. And now we see what we see, thank God, amen? Faith for the future, amen? And that's what we've been preaching and talking about since uh, 
oh my goodness, me and Eddie started looking at it, Marlene, you know, in 2016 or so, and, and now we see it come to pass, at, at least the building itself. And so, you know, 2021, I want to say it this way, where we had faith for the future, I want to say the future is now. The future is now. I tell you, I love that new song that we sang, It's Time. It's time. It's time. And, 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 and from Marlene and I, we just thank you from the bottom of our hearts of, of your faithfulness, your love, your dedication to Jesus first and foremost, to your family, to your jobs, uh, and to this church. So thank you so, so much. I, I know that God's uh, grafted us together as a church family. And, uh, and uh, I thank God for you. I thank God for speaking into our lives, me and Marlene. I thank Miss Vera that always encourages me with the slogan, God is God. God is more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. Isn't that right? God is a God of more than enough. I thank God for Miss June. You know, the, the 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 slogan of what Esther said for such a time as this. You know, it's time. It is time. And and so uh, so my message this morning is really one that I entitled "Run Well." Let's run well. Amen. Let's run well. And uh, let's keep on running. And let's keep on running well as we enter into the year 2021. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to give you the storyline. And Paul, the apostle, had started the church in this little city. And he had followers that became a, a, a large, a, a large a gathering. I'm not sure if they rented the building, if they went into people's houses. I'm not sure if they had a a church house like we have right here. Whatever the case, it, it was it was a, a church, a, a first century church, and and uh, the apostle Paul had started it, stayed with these guys for a couple of years, and as he stayed with them, um, he he uh, he he led many to Jesus uh, in the the um, uh, the society of that little city of Corinth was unique. It was. Uh, it was a melting pot of people in that city because of its location. There was much travel that went through there by sea, by land. There was a whole lot of things happening. Uh, they had their own Bourbon Street, if you will, and in, uh, in Corinth, they had a, a Greek goddess that they that they worshipped in that city uh, that had employed many prostitutes. So you can only imagine the shenanigans and things that went on in the city of Corinth. And when Paul got there, he started preaching Jesus and people started getting saved. People started coming out of darkness and into God's marvelous light, getting saved and, and, and filled with his spirit. And the apostle Paul, as he was instrumental in that, uh, we find uh, uh, even through the, the society that it was back then, uh, you know, we have kind of a society that's kind of chaotic, chaotic right now. Uh, but, you know, uh, I tell you where the light of Jesus Christ was there, shine, it, it was shining so bright, people were getting saved. And so after a while, the Holy Spirit put it on Paul's heart to go to another city, and he left some folks in charge there at the, at the, at the church, and they having service and having a good time, worshiping the Lord, preaching the word that they had, and there were some things that were coming up. So this young leadership pastor wrote Paul a letter. He said, hey, these things are happening. You know, what's going on? He, Paul was like a spiritual father to this young a pastor of the leadership of that church. And so Paul writes this letter, 1 Corinthians, back to that pastor. He says, hey, this is what's going on. Now, you got to realize uh, in Corinth, uh, how many of y'all have heard of the Olympic Games, right? We've heard of those. Um, they're, they're, uh, in Corinth, they had something similar called the Ismuth Games, and, and there's a reason for that name. But, but uh, people from all over the known world would come to the city of Corinth uh, uh, and participate in Olympics-type uh, 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 um, sporting events. And so Paul took opportunity in chapter 9, verse, uh, uh, I want to start in verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. That's kind of give you a setting of what's going on, and Paul is going to, Paul, just like Jesus, Paul is going to use some natural things to get their attention, and he's going to be talking about running a race. Before I get to reading that scripture, this wasn't too long ago, maybe 10 years ago, 
you know, I got to a place, I'm 58, and, uh, and I was 10 years ago, pro, uh, you know, pro, approaching 50, and said, you know, to myself, it was time to get in shape. You know, I've, I've, you know, I, I've, I passed, I passed some areas in my life, you know, I, I'm going to have to put some work in making sure this body stays like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger body, you know. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to do some work. Where it came natural, no, I'm teasing. Uh, where it, it didn't come natural, but you know what, it's like, it's time. It's time to me, just time for me to get fit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't do any research on how to get fit. You know, in high school, we, we went through training, you know, playing sports, football, and different things. And so, I, you know, I knew, you know, you'd lift weights, you jog, and I, I, get my, I get my shorts on, I get my tennis shoes on, and, and I, you know, Marlene's telling me, she said, well, maybe we ought to take it slow. Maybe we ought to just, what we ought to do is walk around, you know, a, a mile or so in our neighborhood and kind of kind of work up our stand. I said, who needs to do that? I didn't tell her that, but, I was, you know, I'm getting a, approaching 48, I said, I'm just go out there and, you know, instead of loose, I might have loosened up some. I might, you know, I might have stretched. I might have stretched a little bit. <laughs> Y'all see, I need to get back on this program. And, uh, and I said, I got this. And, you know, everybody, uh, all the kids are at school. Nobody's around. And uh, so I'll take off out of my driveway and I'm going to jog. And, oh, man, I get, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, a couple of miles or whatever. I, I, I take off in my driveway and I probably go, I probably go, Maybe a couple of yards. <laughs> I might go. I might go less than fifty yards, and all of a sudden, man, it's like I can't catch my breath. And, and it's like, wait a second, I'm not the only one in, in bad shape, am I? <laughs> Can you believe I'm talking about this right after Christmas, after we've eaten everything that we have eaten? But anyway, maybe it's a good good message for us to hear. And and so I start jogging, man. I feel like I'm going two and three miles. I probably hadn't gone. I don't know, 100 feet, and, uh, and I, I have to stop, and I have to do a little walking, and, and I get back home, and man, I'm, I'm, I, I, laid out on the, I laid out on the floor, I can barely breathe, and you know, that was my day one, and uh, I want to keep it up, so in day two, and day three, and day four, I just start, you know, I should have listened to her, but I was, next thing you know, I'm hobbling around the house like this, now I can't do anything as far as exercise. I end up going to my doctor, Dr. Amaku, and I found that there's a little muscle right here on your knee, right at your kneecap. And uh, this little muscle that goes around your kneecap, when you're young and these young kids, man, is strong or whatnot, and when you keep yourself up, you know, it stays strong. But if you just don't do a whole lot of exercise, that thing doesn't get real strong. <laughs> it doesn't. And, and I ended up tearing that thing. And so the doctor basically put me on rest. I couldn't do any more exercise. And that was 10 years ago. I think it's time. I think it's time. I think I need to get going again. And some of y'all do as well. Let's read this scripture. So the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he's talking to these guys and ladies. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection least when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. I think about this scripture, and I think about what Paul is saying, and this morning I want to give you three points. We need to run with purpose. We need to run with discipline, and we need to run with vision. We need to run with purpose, with discipline, and vision. Purpose, discipline, and vision. Amen? So as I think about this message, and I think about to run well, the first point is to run with purpose. We're running for a prize. You guys know that. And we're not competing against each other, by the way. You know what? We all run in a lane. We all God has placed us in a lane, and, you know, if we're submitted to him, we'll stay in that lane. He's called me to pastor, 
He's called me to oversee his flock as a, as a, as a sheep, sheep myself to watch over his sheep. And, and, and I'm, I'm to run in that lane. And, and uh, we're, running, uh, uh, we're running for something, for this prize. And we're not competing against each other, but we're running, you know, for a finish line. I brought up Miss Daisy Date. You know what? She finished her race. Paul, Paul said that in Second in Timothy. He talks about his end. His life was about to end. This is in Second Timothy. He said, "Hey, I'm about to finish my race. Uh, I, I've run it well, you know. And there's a prize set for me. Uh, and and what is that? We look at is is you know to me spiritually and what we're what we're we're running with purpose because uh, uh, as we know what's been What's been given to us through the scriptures is the promise of heaven, of eternal, eternal life with, uh, with those that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to be with our, our Lord Jesus for eternity. What an awesome prize. Man, what an what a, what a, what a, what a awesome you know, promise that we have uh, uh, is eternal life through his son Jesus Christ. And so as we run this race, realize and know we're in this thing, amen? And, and the Lord wants us to, to, to run with purpose, to know, uh, um, yes, to we, we need to be spiritually minded. Yes, we need to, we need to be focused on the things that, that's pleasing to God. We need to find out what's pleasing to God, which we see in his word, right? He's given us his word. And then, and then with focus and purpose, we run after that, and yes, the, the, the finish line, if you will, I, I guess, is, is when we enter into those pearly gates. You know, my, my theology is, is, is very simple. I think about, you know, as we've been saved, uh, the Bible tells us in Philippians, it says uh, that we're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And I think about what, you know, I, just a simple question, what are we being saved from? Well, well, brother, I, I gave my life to Christ. I'm saved. Well, what does that mean, being saved? Well, you realize that you and I are in this in this world that has been that has uh, been laced and indoctrinated with with sin, and sin is just the things that oppose God and 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 the the culture and the things that that has happened since the Garden of Eden with the disobedience of Adam and Eve that's been injected into humanity. Is a, is a nature that's bent the opposite way of what God wants. And so that's why Jesus had to come and as the perfect sacrifice, uh, our, the Savior of the world, that, that he could come and where we were bent, he could straighten us out. And, and though I was dead before, he's made me alive in Christ Jesus toward God. And so, but I'm still in this world. I'm not of this world. Because I'm still in this world, there's still opportunity for that sin to affect my life. And as long as we live in faith, then we're good. And, and just this is a simple picture in my mind of, of salvation. If, if, in fact, you know, we're still in this, this fallen state, this, this world, well, then what are we being saved from? We're being saved from the fallen state of mankind. We've been sa- we're being saved from the sin that, that so easily entangles us. And so, and I believe for me, until I reach those pearly gates, that opportunity is there for sin to try to grab hold to me. But if I'm in faith, I can live above that sin. I think about Noah and the judgment of God came. And, you know, Noah, as long as they were in the ark, they were above the judgment and the flood of God, the flood that was there. But, you know, they really didn't get saved from the flood and until the water went down, recessed, and they entered, hit dry ground, dry land. And so as, in essence, you and I are in Christ Jesus in this world. And though there's, there's, there's opportunity that comes our way for us to do wrong and not please God, as long as we're in Christ, we're in the ark. And when we do reach over, and like Miss Daisy Dake did, and enter into heaven, well, then, then, then we're truly, the salvation is procured. That's just my simple theology. As I look at it, that's the prize. And if if God saved us in that sense, if he if he did that in that sense just for us to go to heaven, why didn't he take us to heaven when we got saved, when we gave our life to Christ? Because he there's another prize. 
And that prize is to see others come to know Jesus and to have eternal life. And how are they going to hear the message except they have a preacher? I'm not talking about just me. I'm talking about us. You see, it's about building the kingdom of God, establishing God-loving, establishing God-fearing families, which make up churches, which make up towns and cities and, and, and parishes and and, and counties for those that are from Colorado and, and states, right? So as we look at this, the prize, yes, is, is eternal life in Christ Jesus, but the prize is also to see others come to know him. Why? Why, why not just let society live like they want? In Judges, the Old Testament, everybody did what was right in their own eyes, and they got in a whole bunch of trouble over and over again. Why? God's ways brings God's blessings. That's just as simple as we can get there. You, you go in God's way, the blessings of God are going to be upon your life. Does that mean you're not going to have headaches or heartaches or problems? No, you're going to have that, but you'll have the peace of God with you. You'll have him there with you. So to run with purpose, I see three things in this running with purpose. Let's reevaluate. And if we need to rearrange, and if we need to renew the things that we're going to run with or run after, to run with purpose, let's look back at 2020 spiritually and see how well we did. <laughs> Physically, let's see how well we did. These are the bodies of the temple. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to keep them in shape. Man, I'm getting convicted already. I'm going to have to start jogging. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to walk first. <laughs> to reevaluate spiritually, yes, physically, but also practically, we, we, need to, we need to ask ourselves, and this, this applies to the church as a whole, but it applies to me and Marlene and our family. It applies to me personally, individually, as a family, for me as the pastor of the church. Why do I do certain things? Why, why, what is the pattern? Why, why am I doing that? We can ask ourselves that, right? When you think about it, what we want to do is want to run with purpose. Do we have our eyes on the prize? Are we running with purpose? And, and a good way to find out is to reevaluate where you are. Find out why you're doing what you're doing. Why do I do this this way? Why did I decide to do it this way? Now, You've heard this before, and I, I use it with uh, premarital, premarital counseling a lot. Uh, and so those that hadn't heard it, I'm going to say it again for you guys. The rest of you can maybe tune me out if you want to. But it was about this young couple that just got married, and they were just deeply in love. And she wanted to do just whatever for her new husband, the, the husband. And he was so excited. She, They went to the store, and she wanted to bake him the most beautiful ham that he'd ever had and so they purchased the ham and she didn't have anything to cook in so she got the ham and and he went over there you know us men y'all ever seen that show two tool time taylor it's old but yeah it's, we got to do everything big right and he got this big old pan that you cook hams in and let's buy this one and he bought that and and so they get home and she fixes the ham up and and uh puts it in that big old what do you call that i guess a roasting pan and and she goes, takes a knife, that, that little ham in that big pan, and she cuts the ends of it off and puts it to the side, and she, she cooks and puts the, puts the uh, what's that, brown sugar on it and, and the, maybe some honey and pineapple and bakes that thing. <sighs> Smell it, you know, and, and boy, he, he's excited. They eat, they're eating, and, and he, he asked her, he said, well, man, everything, this is beautiful, baby. I got one question for you. Why, why did you cut the ends of the ham off? Why did you do that? And she just laughed. She giggled. <laughs> he don't know what he's talking about. That's what you do. You, you, you do that to cook a ham. That's how you do it. And, well, he should have left it alone. But I mean, you know, us men are stupid. We ain't going to leave it alone. And, and so he doesn't leave it alone. And before you know it, she gets aggravated with him. And, man, he's red in the face. And now she's, she said, I'll tell you why we do it. Come on. Let's get in the car and we're going to mom's. So they get to mom's house. Mama, set him straight. Tell him why we cut the ends of the ham off. Well, he's all red face, and, and so uh, the mom is, well, 
patronizing. That, that's just what we do. And, and now he's getting a little aggravated now. He's got red face, but now he's a little aggravated. So wait a second, why do you do it? Well, she didn't have an answer either. And after some time of aggravation, both the newlywed and the mama said, come on, we're going to see Grandma. So they drive up to Grandma's house, and Grandma, she's a little old lady, and uh, in this little old house, and they pull up, and they storm in there. Grandma, set this boy straight. Tell him why we cut the ends of the ham off. Why do we do that? She said, well, honey, I don't know why you do it. And she reached down, and she got this roasting pan, which was very small. She said, that's all I have. And the only way I can get the ham to fit is to cut the ends off. Why do we do what we do? Why do we do those things? Do we do it because mom and dad did it? Do we do it because we saw grandma and grandpa do it? Well, we could get into some religiosity there while we sing certain songs, while we have a certain liturgy type service versus another service. Why do we do? Uh, uh, why do we do the things that we do? We need to number one run with purpose. We need to we need to reevaluate and see why we do the things that we do. Number two, we need to, if necessary, rearrange patterns and habits. There's a definition you guys have heard, I'm sure, you know, about insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. I love uh, uh, what Dennis Cornett and those guys are doing with Humpty Dumpty. Uh, they're meeting together. Uh, they've got challenges in their lives. And you know what? They're coming together for accountability. And uh, uh, they may have tried certain things on their own or certain programs, but, you know, uh, uh, they've learned, hey, you know what? I, I've tried this over and over and over again. It just didn't work. Uh, maybe I need to reevaluate and rearrange and try something different. You know, maybe I need to break this pattern. How about your prayer life? Now meddling. How about your prayer life? How you doing with that? You know, is it, has it turned into something that's just a, a, a rut, a, a, a repetitious thing? I just challenge you this morning, try something new. Get a, get a devotional book, which if you read, uh, we've got many uh, uh, that you can just read in five minutes. Take a scripture. How about, how about reading the Bible? I want to challenge you with this. Take a scripture. There, there's the smallest, the, the shortest scripture in the Bible. Y'all know what it is? So y'all have memorized scripture already. Week number one, checked off. Y'all got that one memorized. So go to the next one. Find, find, start small. Get some scriptures in your heart. I, you know, the Lord's really placed on my heart, and, and, and I thank God for the word Camille brought forth this morning. You know, that word in, in 1 John 5, it says, this is the confidence that we have in God that it, uh, we, when we come to him, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have the petitions that we desire of him. So, so let's, let's evaluate. Let's rearrange if necessary. And the third thing with purpose is let's renew. Let's renew our commitment to Christ first. Let's renew our commitment to our family. You know, we got to get this in order. We got to put Christ right in the center. And then let's renew that commitment to our family. And let's do this, number three. Let's renew our commitment to our workplace. You, you know, if a man don't work, he ought not eat. If he doesn't provide for his household, he's worse than the unbeliever. The Bible says that. Let's renew our commitment to our job. Why are we working? Why are we doing Are we doing it for a paycheck and sundown? Or are we doing it, as the Bible says, as unto the Lord? Let's renew that commitment. And fourth, renew commitment to this church, to your home church, wherever that may be. That priority, that needs to be there. You see, uh, uh, there's a sense of excitement when you start something new. Let's do that for the year 2021. 20, the second point, and these will go fast. Uh, it's a little after uh 11, I know we got kids in here. So we run with, with purpose. Uh, uh, let's run with discipline. Um, remember the prize that is, is at stake. Yes, heaven, but, but building God's kingdom, establishing God-loving, God-fearing people, uh, uh, and, and having families and churches and towns and communities. It takes discipline. Uh, it talks about discipline here about your body, right? That basically is self-control. 
I'm not telling on myself, but man, I didn't have any self-control this this past this past Christmas holiday. There was you guys blessed us so much with uh, candies and and cookies and and all kind of stuff, and they were just on my counter. And I'd go to my daughter Brooke's house, and she got a big old thing of gumbo on the on the stove, and it's just uh, I've been bad. <laughs> Amen. We need to repent. But uh, uh, that's just the physical part, self-control, right? Um, You know, it's something about uh, uh, not necessarily talking about the physical part, although me and Marlene need to repent to our children publicly. Years ago, uh, this was back maybe in the early 90s, right? It was the fasting at Christmas. Yeah, she She never knows. She's like, oh, what is he going to say? 30 years ago, here we are. Man, we're gung ho, and we were going to a church, and the pastor, he 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 had prayed. I pray uh, about calling the church to a fast, and you know a lot of churches do that. We've done it before, typically in January. Typically, it's it's up to the individual and what you're going to do as far as your fast. I can give you the guidelines. I can encourage you on what to do and what not to do, but it's tip- it's really up to you and the Lord. Amen. You don't have to come tell me about the fasting and uh, uh, and those things. It's a personal, private thing, but we do that corporately as a church. And and so, well, this pastor decided to, to make a clarion call for the entire church to fast. And we being in leadership, of course, we're right in there. And he called it right before Christmas. And uh, can you imagine? And so that first week that we were just doing water was uh, Christmas week. And our poor little children at the time, we went over to my parents' house, and they had all the delicacy. And my little, my little children, they were very obedient. Uh, and, and, you know, they were asking, uh, Grandpa was asking, what, what, you know, would you want this or that, the other? And so they just looked, yeah, they wanted it, but no, they didn't. And, uh, and I guess that's one of the regrets we've had. But um, I, I pray we've repented to them uh, uh, about that. But... Uh, as I think about, you know, discipline the body, you know, it's about self-control. And uh, more in line here is the spiritual imp- implications about that, amen, about having a surrendered life. You know, when you have a surrendered life uh, and, and you allow the Holy Spirit to come and live in your life, in Galatians, Paul gives us, um, he gives us the experience that we'll have when you have the Holy Spirit. When you have his spirit, the Lord's spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to experience love. You're going to experience joy. You're going to experience peace. And you know what? The other six gifts of uh, the six fruits of the spirit, you're going to exhibit patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and guess what? Self-control. The third point and the final one, you can come on up, uh, guys, to run with vision. So we've talked about run with purpose. We've talked about run with discipline. We're talking about run with vision. And uh, we talked about faith for the future. But what we're seeing in 2021 is faith is now. Everybody say faith is now. And I want to give you an acrostic. If you don't know what an acrostic is, it's real simple. You just take the first letter of the word now and we define each one like N-O-W. N, I've got let nothing hinder. Everybody say let nothing hinder. Amen. So, yes, we talked about faith for the future, but I want to talk to you about faith. Uh, the future is now and running with vision. In the first one, the N is let nothing hinder you. Uh, take day by take it day by day. Uh, me, and, uh, me and Dennis Cornett, once again, we're talking about some issues. And uh, Dennis has a tremendous testimony. Um, it's well over 30-something years now that he is recovering alcoholic. And um, uh, tremendous uh, testimony. And uh, he heads up the, the, the meetings uh, with you guys. And, and I asked him, we were talking about a situation. And I said, how, how long you, how long you been you know, sober, however I said it? And he said, well, as of right now, and he gave me the years that he's been like that. And he said, as of right now, because he knows, you know, that tonight or tomorrow, you know, the, the temptation's there. 
And so let nothing hinder. Take it day by day. If we get on our spiritual high horse and say, hey, we got this, watch out. So I thank God for that. So run with vision, faith. The future is now and, and the end is let nothing hinder. The O, let the one help. You know who the one is, huh? In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He prayed to the Lord to take it away. And Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In the third and final one, the W, surrender your will. Surrender your will. In Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Stand to your feet this morning. I want to encourage you as we close out the year 2020 and we approach the year 2021 that we're looking to run with purpose. We're looking to run with discipline. We're looking to run with vision. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to show us the areas that we have need of to change and then the last thing I want to do is I want to encourage you to connect with someone else, to connect if it's your church, to connect with someone uh, uh, so that you in, don't have to walk this thing by yourself. In Hebrews, and I'll close with this, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have a Savior that loves us, and he's here for us, and he's here for to live in us and to help us to run our race with purpose, with discipline, with vision. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for, Lord God, every aspect of this service. We thank you for these beautiful children that have been so obedient, Lord, in this service. Uh, Lord, their little spirits and minds receive everything that was said. And not only, especially us as adults, Lord, that we would find ourselves conforming, Lord God, to what is pleasing to you. We thank you and we give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to dismiss the congregation. Remember, no service Wednesday night. If you are in need of prayer, come on up. We have our altar workers who will be glad to pray for you. God bless you. You're dismissed. And we'll see you next Sunday in Jesus' name.